Welcome to the Hidden Corners, where truth and terror collide. Discover a realm where the lines between the living and the supernatural blur as you embark on a journey to the paranormal and visit the mysterious hidden corners of your mind. From haunted houses to cryptic dreams, psychic abilities to ancient legends, the hidden corners unlock the secrets that lie hidden within the shadows of our consciousness. This is your host, Ginger Winters. Get ready to confront the unexplainable and uncover the truth that lies within the hidden corners. The Owl by Ginger Winters The three boys had been fishing down at the slough all morning, drinking beer, telling tales, nothing unusual. They spent most their Saturdays down at the slough. Buck's dad was hard-headed and mean, so Buck had a habit of leaving home early before his dad was awake. He'd jump in the farm truck and go pick up his buddies for a day of fishing and drinking. Sunday was chore day, but Saturdays were all his to do with as he pleased. Buck had inherited his dad's mean streak. He liked to fight. He liked to kill things. He couldn't wait till hunting season started. He didn't even care about the meat. He wanted to see the suffering in his prey's eyes, just like his daddy did to his mama when he had too much to drink. He was surprised that his buddy Arlo liked to hang around him. He hadn't had many friends growing up, and now that he was in high school, he had fought just about every boy in his school, and you don't make friends like that. But Arlo was different. Nothing got that boy down. He always had a smile on his face, no matter how many times it had been punched. Arlo's little brother had to tag along, but he was quiet and didn't cause much trouble. He wasn't quite right in the head, but that didn't matter to Buck. He was 14, and that made him old enough to drink. In Buck's eyes, that was all that mattered. Nightfall was coming on, and all the beer was gone. Buck didn't really want to return home, knowing his dad had probably been drinking too, and his mom would be suffering the consequences. The boys had built a campfire, and the crickets were providing a nice background of music. Why go home? Heck, no one would care. Hey, Arlo, you see that new girl just come to town? Arlo had definitely seen the new girl. What boy in town hadn't? She was pretty. The kind of girl that turned a guy's head when she walked into the room and set his blood boiling in his jeans. I'm going to get me that girl, Buck said. You ain't got a shot, Buckwheat. She's way out of your league, Arlo stated with a grin. Yeah, well, she ain't never had it as good as what I can give her, he remarked with an obscene gesture that guys like Buck use a little too often. I know where she lives. I seen her walking home from school. She lives just past the old Crenshaw farm. I seen her take that path through the woods right there between Crenshaw's and the old mill. I figure she has to pass right by that mill to get to her place. We just hide out at the mill, and she'll never see us coming. Buck had it all planned out in his mind. But Buck! Arlo tried to interject, but Buck punched him in the shoulder and knocked him into the truck. Arlo knew better than to argue with him. He glanced over at his little brother, Jesse, but Jess was just sitting there staring off into space, as usual. Come on, let's go home, Arlo said. He hoped it was only the beer making his friend think bad thoughts and that maybe he'd sleep it off and forget all about it by morning. 
Arlo was used to Buck's bad behavior, and although he usually didn't agree with whatever scheme Buck had dreamt up, he knew better than to disagree with him. Buck drove the boys home and then cut the lights on the pickup as he drove up his long driveway, hoping his dad wouldn't see him coming. He sneaked in the back door and up to his room. His dad must already be passed out on the sofa, his mom probably sitting in the kitchen crying. That was the routine, and it never seemed to change. Buck couldn't get that pretty girl off his mind, and the more he thought about her, the more he convinced himself that his plan was a good one. To hell with Arlo. He'd have her all to himself. Morning songbirds woke Buck, and he rose to do the Sunday chores around the farm. It had been in his dad's family for two generations, and that was the part of the reason his daddy drank so much. He had never wanted to be a farmer. He resented his parents dying and leaving it to him, but he had grown up on the farm and didn't know how to do much else. So they tilled the fields and planted corn and raised hogs. Buck hated it, too. There was no way he'd take over the farm when his dad died. He'd rather die than be a farmer and raise stinking hogs. As he ambled through the normal routine, he couldn't get his mind off that new girl. She was his prize, and the sooner he could have her, the better. So he figured he'd cut school early, go hide out at the mill, wait for her to come home, then surprise her. He didn't think much past that consequences of his actions was not something he'd even consider. They simply didn't exist in his mind. Monday came all too quickly. Buck made a big show of leaving for school, even said bye to his mom. He jumped in the farm truck and picked up Arlo and Jesse and headed to school. Nothing was mentioned to his friends. This was his alone. He left at lunchtime. No one would think that strange. He often drove down to the DQ for a burger, so the fact that he left the school grounds was no big deal. But leaving his friends behind was. That worried Arlo. But Buck drove away before he could grab his brother and walk to the truck. He drove out to the mill along the back pasture, hid his truck in a low stand of brush on the opposite side of the path, and waited for the girl. They called her Morning Glory. She'd always been a bit of a dreamer, a strange child that enjoyed being outdoors, no matter the weather or the time of day. Not one for dolls, she befriended the animals of the forest, always bringing home baby birds with broken wings, little squirrels who'd lost their mamas, even deer followed her home. She surprised her mom by digging up worms and then feeding them to her baby birds, and she'd go to great lengths to save a spider whose web had been destroyed by the broom. They bought her a puppy, a little scrawny pip of a thing, and when her dad took the shotgun and went after the coyote, who'd grabbed the pup. She was more concerned about the coyote's safety than her own little puppy. She seemed to understand the cycle of death and rebirth and survival of the fittest. Glory never seemed to have any friends at school. She was quiet, shy, introspective. She was a good student and always turned her work in on time, but the teachers noted that she wouldn't participate with the other kids in their games or at recess. She would stand under a tree, talking with the birds. The other kids started making fun of her, and boys found great delight in tormenting her, pulling her pigtails, calling her names, and even though kids can be very mean, she never seemed to notice. She was a master at ignoring everyone and everything and lived in her own little world. Her parents' decision to move from Oregon to this little town in Idaho was primarily due to her father's new job, but they hoped that it would also be good for Glory to live in the country again and be around other teenagers who lived more of a rural life. Maybe they'd understand one another. Maybe she could actually develop some friendships or have a boyfriend. They had lived on the outskirts of Portland this past year, but their safe little community was now overrun with homeless camps, and they didn't feel very safe anymore. They had moved around a lot, from one town to another, always in search of a better opportunity. Idaho was different, rural and quiet with a strong 4-H program. They introduced her to the new school and signed her up in 4-H. She'd always communed with wild animals, 
Now maybe she'd find the same pleasure in taking care of domestic farm animals. It was worth a try. They'd get her some rabbits and some chickens. The first 4-H meeting was Monday night. They told her to stay after school, sent her with a sandwich, and offered to pick her up after the meeting. She objected, as usual, preferring to walk home, even if it would already be dusk. This little town felt so safe, so why not let her have her walk? Glory sat through the uncomfortable meeting, staring through the window. It wasn't that the meeting was uncomfortable. It was having to be around a group of kids she didn't know and didn't fit in with. She couldn't wait till it was over. Her 4-H leader didn't like the idea of her walking home alone, but she assured her that she was quite fine, did this all the time, and abruptly turned and walked away. She savored her walk through the quiet streets, listening to the barn swallows who were just starting their calling and the swooping of the bats catching mosquitoes. The path through the woods was her favorite part of the walk. It was not a shortcut, and in fact, since it led past the old mill, she had to cut back through a pasture to reach her house. It would have been much easier to just stay on the road, but even though it was beginning to grow dark, she wouldn't miss her walk through the woods for anything. Buck had grown tired of waiting. Why didn't she come through here? He'd been watching her for weeks now, and she always took this path. He had dozed off, leaning up against the tree where he hid an ambush and was angry at himself. Had she passed right by while he was sleeping and he missed his opportunity? Now it was getting dark. He swore a few choice words under his breath, then headed towards his pickup to drive back home. Just as he reached the old farm truck, he thought he glimpsed a movement through the trees. He paused, saw it again. It was her. He hurried back to his hiding spot and waited. She was definitely not in a hurry. She had stopped, looking up into the trees, and then walked a few more steps, stopped and glanced up again. It looked like she was talking to the birds. What a strange girl, he thought, but mostly he just wanted her to hurry up. She walked up in front of the mill and stood there, like she was waiting for him. Ah, this is going to be fun, he thought to himself. He crept up behind her, and just as he reached for her, she turned, smiled, and let out an unearthly call. It wasn't a scream. It was more of a hoot sound. It took him off guard, but he couldn't miss this opportunity, so he grabbed for her. At exactly that moment, he heard a swoosh past his face and felt something sharp rip across his head. The largest owl he had ever seen was beating his wings in front of him, tearing at his face with his sharp beak, digging his razor-sharp talons into his skin. He waved his arms to protect his face and yelled at his attacker. The girl didn't run. She didn't even move. She just stood there, staring at him. He reached for her again. This time he was angry. He never heard the beating wings coming at him, but he felt the talons rip his throat. He gasped, grabbing at his neck, and felt the blood oozing through his fingers. But still, the girl just stood there. It was maddening, and he was furious. He grabbed for her, but again... The talons ripped across his face, and he whirled around looking for the bird. He attempted one last time to grab the girl, and he fell at her feet as the owl ripped into his flesh. He was writhing on the ground, trying to protect his face as a giant bird pecked at his eyes. He screamed for help, but the girl just stood there, watching. Finally, he had no more strength to fight. It was as if the gaze of the girl held him there, unable to move, unable to resist the feasting that had begun. The next day at school, Arlo didn't see his friend, nor the next day or the next. The old farm truck was found out near the old mill, but there was no sign of Buck not even a stitch of clothing. No one ever questioned the girl. 
No one but Arlo had any reason to. And he wasn't going to ask any questions. <laughs> 